And if it doesn't raise costs, and we're truly going to take this money from Medicare, what it's going to do to our seniors is I, I have a message for you. You're going to die sooner. Remember when they all got real mad about Ellen Grayson saying something quite similar? Yeah, they won't get mad this time because that was a Republican senator, uh, Dr. Tom Coburn of Oklahoma, doing his best to scare the bejesus out of senior citizens. He was speaking on the floor of the United States Senate on day two of the debate over the Senate version of health reform. If you're a senior and you're on Medicare, you better be afraid of this bill. An unnamed senior Senate Democratic aide responded to all that with this thoughtful analysis uh, by telling Talking Points Memo, quote, Senator Coburn's insights on health care are about as helpful as his marital advice to Senator Ensign. Ow! But Senator Coburn isn't the only one whose primary political strategy has returned in these critical final arguments to spooking old people. Presidential runner-up John McCain rolled out his version of the health reform will kill Medicare talking point yesterday. I will eagerly look forward to hearing from the authors of this legislation as to how they can possibly achieve a th half a trillion dollars in cuts without impacting existing Medicare programs negatively and eventually lead to rationing of health care in this country. Those remarks made as Senator McCain introduced an amendment that would make insurance companies very happy by shipping the bill back to committee and stripping away all the provisions designed to slow the growth of Medicare spending. It's a position that makes it really easy for Senator McCain to scare old people. But it's also really hard for him to defend about himself since just last October, during his presidential campaign, it was John McCain that proposed a $1.3 trillion cut to Medicare and Medicaid. A flip-flop so naked that the usually mild-mannered Senate Majority Leader called him out on it. This uh, man talks about earmarks. This is a one big earmark to the insurance industry. And in addition to that, the sponsor of the amendment during his presidential campaign talked about cutting these monies. This is a huge, big belly flop flip flop. Okay? Okay. Joining us now is the Washington Post's Ezra Klein. Ezra, thanks very much for coming on the show. Thank you. You are a policy guy, Ezra. Can you put the Save Medicare line we're hearing from Republicans now? in the context of recent Republican history on Medicare? Sure, it's, it's a bit of an odd move. So obviously the Republican Party opposed Medicare when it was begun. Ronald Reagan very famously campaigned against it. But much more recently, in 97, Republicans voted for the Balanced Budget Amendment, which cut Medicare by about, I think it was 12%, if I'm remembering my graphs right. This is much smaller. It's a much softer change to the program. It has a lot more to do with private insurers in this thing called the Medicare Advantage Program. And you're seeing something, I think, a little bit deeper, which has begun to get a little bit strange, though. Republicans don't believe Medicare is sound. They believe you should be able to reform it. But because they've sort of run out of things to say about health care, you can't say it's going to increase the deficit now because it won't. You can't say it'll change people's insurance because it won't. You can't say it's a government takeover because it isn't. So now they're sort of left in a tried and true Democratic tactic, which is go after the old people. On the issue of how much it's going to cost, one of the big arguments we've heard both from Republicans and conservatives uh, has been that this will just cost too much. But, of course, this week the CBO releases its report on the Senate bill, which says it will decrease insurance premiums for the vast majority of Americans. Uh, do you think that will make a significant difference in the debate? I think that what you're seeing with that is that if it had come out the other way, that would have made a significant difference. The, the report was commissioned by one of your conservatives, Evan Bayh. But as it is, you know, we're sort of in the end game here. And as you would have always predicted, the four or five people who can credibly say, if you don't have my vote, you can't pass this bill, are going to get their pound of flesh. Right now you have uh, Ken Salazar wandering around the Senate, and he's Secretary of the Interior, and he was a one-term senator. You think, well, why is he here? Well, it's because, as Secretary of the Interior, he controls a lot of parks money, infrastructure money. My hunch is that by the end of this, Nebraska is going to have an absolutely beautiful state park <laughs> system. So there's a ways here to go. There, there are a lot of compromises that are going to have to be made still. On the public option, Ezra, one of the things you've written about uh, today, in fact, was about that, the, the many, many, many compromises the public option has been subjected to. Do you think any kind of recognizable public option is actually going to survive the Senate? 
Uh, I think something we're going to call public option might will be recognizable. I'm increasingly pessimistic on that. You, you've had it both taken down from where it would have a real sort of price advantage. I mean, they made it so public option that could have saved people 20 to 30 percent on premiums now is going to cost a little bit more than private insurance. They've already done that. And now they're thinking of making it maybe a national nonprofit, maybe a trigger with a later opt. I mean, it's getting very complicated. The, the thing I wrote today was, you know, how many public option compromises can, can fit on the head of a pin? And we're, we're pretty much there. I mean, we're, we're arguing over a very narrow piece of ground now. The Washington Post's Ezra Klein, thanks so much for joining us tonight, Ezra. Appreciate it. Thank you.